Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, The Crafted Studio Company. I am here with you today to do another collection of holiday winter decorated sugar cookies. This is part of a workshop series I'm doing in my city here with my company, Sugar Bee Cookies, in Western Canada. It's also a DIY kit and tutorial for take home that I'm offering this holiday season with this video link. I will put all the timestamps to jump to different sections in the description of the video below. So if you are following along for the second time or third time to do these cookies, you can just use those timestamps in the description to jump to the different sections instead of going through all of this again. If you haven't purchased a DIY kit from me, do not worry. You can bake your own cookies and make your own icing and follow along. I'm just going to jump right in and talk about the kit for those of you that do have one. Your kit will have, I'm just going to do this a little off camera. Okay. Your kit will have a total of eight cookies. I'm only showing four here because I already have four out and decorated. You will have a to-go sort of latte cup, a glove mitten, you will have a tree and a snowflake. Now, if you're baking your own cookies, you do not need these exact shapes. You can do these designs on other shapes. You can use any sort of snowflake cutter that you have. There are hundreds out there. I know I have way too many snowflake cutters. <laughs> you can do any tree shape you want. The mitt might be one that you don't readily have at hand, but you can hand cut this on your icing, or sorry, on your dough if you want to. Same with the latte cup. You could just do a regular sort of rectangular rectangular shape or a good tip and trick I have is that you can print out an image online and scale it to size and then I use parchment paper to trace that shape and then I cut it out and then I place that shape on my dough and cut around it so that's a trick that you can do at home but most cutters you can get within a day or two on Amazon and that's really handy your kit will also have a little cup of some sort, and you'll see why in a little bit, a paintbrush. So if you are using um, your own supplies at home, you wanna make sure that you have a paintbrush that has synthetic hairs on it, not animal hairs. You'll wanna make sure it's something that's only used for food preparation. Your kit will also have a needle tool or a scribe tool of some sort. It may not look like this one. Um, it just depends on my supplies over the holiday season. You can get a needle tool from knitting sections, say at Walmart or other home stores. You'll just want to go and get a nice thin um, pointy knitting needle and then sterilize it because they are powder coated metal. You can also use a toothpick when you're in a pinch or one of those long bamboo skewers with the pointed end. Your kit will also come with your icing. So these are pre-prepped in the consistencies that we need and I'll talk more about that in a moment but you'll have a dark blue, a light blue and a white. The white is going to be in a piping consistency and then the two blues are going to be in what I call a medium consistency and I'll show a demonstration on that in a moment for those of you making your own icing at home or if you're following along later and want to make your own. I'm just going to put my icings there for now. Your kit is also going to come with a sort of a little manual for the workshop or tutorial and it's going to talk about you know everything that I'm talking about now a little bit about me and your supplies what the workshop entails it's going to talk about royal icing consistencies and I'll do a demo in a moment and some coloring tips you'll also get my recipes for both royal icing and sugar cookies this particular collection also has a little sheet on uh, sort of the cookie rotation and the order of the cookies we're going to be doing. And the reason for that is, is quite often a cookie decorator can't do one cookie from start to finish. Some of these tutorials that I've been uploading over the holidays can all be done at once. 
but when we get to cookies like this, where we're flooding sections, we need to do the sections at different times and give dry times. So we're going to be starting with one cookie, moving on to another and another and another, and then coming back around in a rotation to do details on top. So I've outlined that just so that you have the sort of the schedule rotation so that you can do it most successfully in the quickest time at home. And then these manuals also have a step-by-step -step visual and instruction guide for every cookie that we're decorating today. And yes, the tree is upside down and I'll explain that visual when we get to the cookie. Some other things that you will need on hand is a, a clean cloth or paper towel, some water, I just keep mine in a water bottle, um, but just a little cup of water. You'll probably want to damp this down. You'll need a pair of scissors. And then if you have another little dish cup or uh, just a little tray of some sort, just to hold some water in would be handy. If you have any wax paper or parchment on hand, that'll also be very handy because we're going to be doing some practicing with the piping. So I'm just going to put these cookies aside. And we're going to talk about the icing. Royal icing, when it comes off your mixer, most recipes are going to be for a really stiff royal icing. So this is just fresh off my mixer. And you can see it holds its peak. It's really stiff. This would be what you want to use when you're making gingerbread houses for the glue to hold it all together. Um, some royal icing recipes are actually even thicker than this. Mine is just a little bit looser because I rarely need a super stiff icing. This icing is good for um, doing sort of detail work like flowers or anything that you need to hold its shape. And we want to thin this down. What we're looking for with our royal icing today is two different consistencies. Our white is going to be a piping consistency. And if you want to follow along in your little manual, if you have that, you'll want to go to the page that says, let's talk royal icing. And a piping consistency is what we call a 20 to 24 second heel time. And what that means, the heel time, when you hear people talking about that, is that when you score or mark the surface of the icing, it takes that long for the wound to heal up. We want to add just the tiniest little bit of water at a time. So I usually work with about half a teaspoon of water to a bowl of icing because icing reacts really quickly to water. Sugar absorbs it and it becomes more fluid very, very easily. So that's why I always keep it in a water bottle just to, um, or like a little squeeze bottle so that I can just control how much is going in at a time. And even then it's super easy to put too much. So that little bit of water has made this more fluid. And that would be, see the soft peaks now, where it, it, it holds its shape for a moment, but then it starts leveling itself out. That is what I would call a piping consistency. It's, it's sort of like the consistency of toothpaste. And I'm really hoping that the light isn't reflecting too much on this where you can't see it. That is the consistency of our white. Our blues are in a medium consistency. So we want something that has a 12 to 16 second heal time. This will be more fluid. It will level itself out so that we can flood a section and have it come out nice and flat and where we don't have to manipulate it too, too much with the needle tool. And that will make more sense when we start practicing. But you can see it starts leveling itself. 
And if I were to score the top of it, that, that wound, that scar will take about 12 to 15 seconds to disappear. And that is what we're doing with the blues today. This is so that we can outline cookies and do minor detail work, but then we can also flood and fill in sections and have it just level itself. So if you're making your icing at home, that is the consistency you want. You could actually make all your icing in this consistency. The white doesn't have to be thicker. It's just gonna help us keep some of the definition in the shapes that we're doing today. So while we're talking about icing, we're gonna talk about the bags. And then we'll do a little bit of practice to show you how to get comfortable with the piping bags if you haven't worked with them before. We are working with tipless piping bags. You can get these on Amazon. Um, you can get them in most bake supply stores now. They're very common and very popular. You don't really need the coupler and the tips anymore. So to prepare these, we really want to just cut the smallest amount off. So what I do is I actually just pinch back the icing away from the tip and I use my thumb and forefinger to create like just a little stabilized nib that I can cut off and I'm not even going to be cutting off that much. I'm going to be cutting off maybe half that amount. We want just the tiniest little hole in our icing because we don't want too thick of an icing to come out, especially because we're using a medium consistency that can flood. So when you squeeze it, it should come out nice and easy without a strong squeeze. I'm not squeezing very hard and you can see it's coming out very, very nicely. Your line should be a nice thin line. If it's too thin, and you have to squeeze really hard in order for the icing to come out, then you need to go back and take just a, and I mean a hair, but just a hair off more. And that's why I use my little pinch method, just to give myself some stability. If you find it's curling around the end and not coming out very easily, that also means that your hole probably needs to be cut just a little bit bigger or your icing is too thick. So you'll want to go ahead and prep all your icing bags now. The designs we're doing today are actually fairly flexible. So if your hole is a little too big, don't worry about it. And you can see that didn't come out as nicely. It's, it's coming out thinner and kind of curling. It means that I need just the tiniest little bit more off. And I don't know if you can see that, but I am taking the tiniest little bit amount off. It is amazing how fast that hole will get bigger. You think you're taking a little bit, but you're actually taking a lot. Your white, you can actually take off a little bit more. This one's really flexible. You don't want to go too big. Always know where your plastic piece is going to because if you're decorating and you have your cookies out, you don't want that plastic piece in your cookies. So the white can be, and I can actually see that my white is not that piping consistency that I was talking about. This is more that medium consistency. So I accidentally mixed my bag with um, my decorating supplies this morning when I was doing fresh decorating on some orders. So this will still work though. I've created these collections to be pretty fluid for whatever consistency icing you have in your bag so that um, you can learn and, and not stress too much. As a cookie decorator, when I'm decorating cookies, I quite often will have two or three different consistencies of every one color. Um, from everything from a super thin icing that floods really fast to a super stiff icing that I can do detail work on. These are a good, nice in-between consistency. 
So to get comfortable with icing, if you have a piece of wax paper, parchment, or even just a dish that you can work on, or a, a surface, a clean surface that you can wipe down, I'll show you a couple of the techniques. I'll use the darker blue. A couple of the techniques we're gonna be working with today. But first and foremost, in order to work with a piping bag, you wanna have the thickest part of the piping bag in the palm of your hand. You also don't want your piping bag too full. This white one is about as full as you want. Um, these are 10 inch piping bags, generally 12 inches, the most common one. And about 100 grams of icing is about the most that you want in there. The reason for this is that the bigger it is, the harder it is on your hands to control, but also on your hands for the aching and um, wrist problems that you might have. There is a lot of squeezing and a lot of consistency in, our, in your pressure you need when you're dealing with royal icing. So you want to hold it like this. You'll want to keep your cloth at hand so that you can wipe the tip in between use. You also want to get used to having your hand guide your other hand guide your wrist or holding the piping bag. Get used to this early on because that is going to give you the most control and stability. You're going to find today that I'm not doing that. That's just so that I can keep my hand out of the picture so that you can see. So when we're dealing with royal icing, if you want to do little dots, your icing bag is generally a little more upright and you're going nice and close to the surface and just squeezing without lifting the bag and then releasing your pressure and you have a nice little dot. And then and to do bigger dots, you just hold the icing bag there and let the icing pool around it. And if you have any little peaks or want to fix things, you just use your needle tool. To do a line, what we're going to do is we're going to barely squeeze and touch the surface. We're going to be lifting off the surface and letting our wrist do the work to follow the line. Sounds counterintuitive, but it's exactly what you want to do. So we're going to squeeze and connect to the surface. And at the same time, I'm squeezing consistently. Oops, or not consistently. I'm trying to do this a little slower so you guys can see it. We're going to touch the surface, lift, and let the icing drop. And then I'm going to drop my end back down and release the pressure. So touch, lift, drop, release, and touch down. That is how we do a line. You do not want to do what seems natural is to draw right on the surface. You can see I'm not getting a consistent line. It's harder con to control. And the closer I am, the less straight your line is, but also it doesn't give you the time to correct any errors. So if I'm going to do like a shape, say a round, you can see hopefully how high I'm lifting off the surface and it's giving me time to correct where the icing falls. So you want to let the icing fall into place, lift and let it fall into place. That's some basics to get comfortable. Feel free to practice as long as you want and pause the video. One of the other techniques we're gonna be using today, this icing might be a little too loose for it, but we'll see. I just wanna use the blue because it shows contrast better on the video, is we're gonna squeeze a dot and while we're squeezing, we're gonna pull down. And it's okay if you have a little tail like that. We just wanna create some, some little teardrops. Squeeze and pull down. This is hard to do on this angle and not holding the hand. That is, there we go. That's a little more what you want to do. Creating little teardrops today. If you don't have a perfect teardrop, don't worry about it. You can use your needle tool to just fix it. And all I'm doing is kind of manipulating the icing and pulling down through the center. And you can see I'm cleaning the tip in between um, uses on my needle tool as well. So get comfortable with some teardrops because what we want to do is create this knit pattern today. That's the focus of this collection. You don't have to draw a line to do the knit pattern. I'm just 
trying to draw a guideline to show you. What we're going to be doing is creating those teardrops sort of from side to side. And this is going to help us do the knit and the snowflake in our mitt, knit mitts. So we're squeezing one drop, pulling down, and just beside on the other side and a little lower, I'm doing another one. It's almost like you're making little hearts. And you can drag your tip through the icing a little bit to help pull it. But if you can get comfortable with that, it'll really help you with this today. And then when it comes to the tree, we're going to be doing a brushed embroidery technique. And what this is, is I'm just creating dots. And then I'm going to be using my paintbrush. I've just grabbed another paintbrush here for the moment. This is not the one that I'll be showing you in the tutorial later. But we're going to just be pressing down into that and pulling it. And this is a brushed embroider technique. Kind of creates that embroidered edge. So go ahead and give those a practice. I would suggest you do it in your white um, simply because it, it will be thicker in all your kits and that will make those techniques a little easier. Okay, so first things first, we need to create our backgrounds on our cookies. I was talking about that rotation that we need to do between the cookies. We need to get some areas dry or at least crusted over and rested before we do decor on top of them. So we're going to start with our actual, our hardest cookie, believe it or not. This should be the last cookie in the series because it employs techniques that we're going to be using throughout on each different cookie. But I want to get a base background of white so that I can do all the details around it. So first, grab your latte cookie. And then grab a little cup and we're going to create a glaze and we're going to glaze that white section and then we're going to go through and glaze the background of our mitt and then we're going to turn that white glaze into a light blue glaze for the snowflake and then again the dark glaze for the tree so we're working in a sequence that works smart so that we don't have to clean our cup in between where the colors kind of flow together so take your white and squeeze nice and hard, but not so hard that you bulge your bag. If you start noticing a bulge or you're putting too much pressure, your bag will stretch and bulge out, even if it is a no bulge bag. If your icing is thicker, this is gonna take a little more time. You can cut off a little bit more on the tip to make it easier because this technique today is very forgiving. So you'll want a couple of tablespoons of your white. And then you want to take a little bit of water. And you don't need a lot to thin that down. We're just creating a glaze. Something that is very fluid. You don't want it too watery because then it'll be very translucent on your cookie when we put it on the cookie. You just want something that's very runny, but has some thickness and viscosity to it. So I'm going to want to do the sleeve portion of this cookie. I'm going to set these aside. So we're doing just the sleeve and I'm going to take my needle tool. And I'm just going to create some guidelines in the cookies for my in the cookie for myself. I'm actually just going to scratch out a couple of guidelines. Now you might not be able to see that on camera, but if you do that yourself, you'll be able to to see it just enough. And you don't want to press down into the cookie because you don't want to break it or snap it. You just want to scratch the surface. You could also use an edible marker to create yourself guidelines, but it's really not necessary. And you're just going to take some of that glaze, pop it on your cookie, and we're going to be glazing the cookie. If you notice any speckles 
in my cookie or even picking up on my icing a little bit that is because for the winter I do a winter spice sugar cookie so it's got like nutmeg and ginger and cinnamon and cloves and stuff in it so that is likely what you are seeing you want to hold your cookie in a nice safe space that you're not going to muck up any decorations you can also use your scribe tool to grab the cookie again don't press down into it you don't want to break your cookie and just stabilize it and you can see I'm going to just pull that glaze right over the edge. Icing likes to pull back on itself. It flows wherever the most of the icing is flowing. Or like where you have pools, icing will flow back to that. And you do not need to have a really thick layer. So if you have sort of naked spots showing through, that is fine. We are going to be decorating on top of it and I promise it is going to be looking beautiful in the end. This is just so we can get a background base so that we can do all the other sections and this is gonna crust over really quickly. So while we have the latte cup, we wanna do one other section and that is gonna be the lid. So I'm scratching in just a little guideline on the top here so that I can do my lid. So you'll wanna take your blue, light blue icing and this is where that line work and practice hopefully that you did comes in handy. You want to create a line and then you just want to outline the shape of the lid. And it doesn't have to be perfect to the edge of the cookie. Just do the best you can. And I will say this, I mentioned I'm working on a funny angle. So I can't see the cookie. I'm actually sitting quite far away so you can turn your cookie if it's easier to see and to fill and flood all you're going to do is squeeze harder again not so hard that you bulge the bag just so that more icing pools out and you're going to work around your edge of your cookie you can see compared to the line work how much um, icing is coming out and anywhere that you have sort of these sections that are bare as you're working, don't worry about that. It will fill in or will help manipulate it with our needle tool. If you have a lot of bare spots, like, you know, um, let's see if I can do an example here. So using this section before, if you find you're like that, You'll be able to manipulate that icing with your needle tool to fill in, but you can see I'm, I'm really having to work it. I'm really having, really spending way too much time on this to try and fill it up. Go back in and add more icing. It means you don't have enough icing. You don't want so much that it spills over because this does have a flood consistency to it a little bit, so it will be looser. And if you have any marks or peaks, you can just use your needle tool to kind of stitch it down. Or you can shake, hopefully I'm not shaking the camera too much. You can shimmy your cookie a little bit and it'll level it out. That's why we have this medium consistency icing. It, it does that. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go through. And I let that sit for a moment so it's already starting to stiffen up. So you want to make sure you do that flooding right away so that you end up with a nice smooth layer. Otherwise, it might not smooth down as nicely. So I'm just, any air bubbles I'm popping, any little marks, I'm just kind of using a stitching motion. And if you need to move your icing around, you want to use like a little whipping motion, a little, you're pulling the icing. I'm not scratching the cookie. I'm just pulling the icing and moving it to where I need to. And that is why you need enough icing in there. You need enough to manipulate. You can also gently tap your cookie. Cookies are strangely resilient um, to tapping. They generally won't break unless they're overbaked and, and sort of crunchier, which is great if that's the kind of cookie you like. These should be... This recipe is generally a little bit softer. 
Although my winter spice, I do notice come out a little crisper because the spices draw up the moisture. So there we've done the lid and we've done just a base background for the sleeve. We're going to let this sit for about five or 10 minutes so that it can crust over and we can come in and do the other section without it bleeding together. So we're going to sit this guy aside and we're going to come in now to our mitt. And this is because we already have a white glaze going. If you need to add a little more icing, go ahead. But you don't want too much. But we're going to glaze the whole background of our mitt. And take your time on this. I am trying to do a video that is a certain time frame today. So um, I'm working a little bit faster than... I would normally recommend. Normally in my workshops I give two and a half to three hours to do the review of the kit and everything as well as decorate the four cookies. And then there's usually a little bit of time for people to decorate their other four cookies in whatever designs they want. So we're just getting a, a rough, make sure you have your cloth handy because your fingers are going to get messy, just a rough glaze on top of that. There is enough decor going on top of this that the glaze is meant to be a little bit rustic, a little bit see-through, so that we can see those details. Now we're going to set him aside to crest over and dry. The next cookie we're going to be working on is our snowflake. Now we already have white in here. And you don't have to do your snowflake in the light blue. You can do white background. You can do whatever color background you want. This is just how I designed the collection. But we're doing this in the sequence that we are because this light blue and the white that's existing in our cup is going to be okay. They'll mix together nicely. And we're going to squeeze out about a tablespoon of that light blue. Now, you already have a thinned down white in there. So mix it up first and see if you're actually going to need to add any water. And if you do add water, you really just need a drop. And I'm not going to need to. See, it's nice. It's nice and fluid. So make a mess like me. <laughs> Grab your snowflake cookie. And pop that glaze on and paint it out. I actually do a lot of my holiday cookies with this sort of background because it's rustic and I like that for the holidays. But also it, it dries quicker. It lets me get more cookies done in a shorter time frame and I get so many orders at this time of year for my pre-sales. So I find this, this glaze effect is, is a great tip and trick because if we were to outline and flood this whole cookie and let it dry, it would take a solid eight hours to dry before you could stack them or package them. Maybe even longer. It depends on your, it depends on your humidity. It depends on your temperatures. It depends on the weather. You can sit your cookies in front of a fan and help them crust over, but the glaze will crust really quick and let us work on it. So we're going to sit him aside. And now we're going to rotate to our tree. And we're using a darker blue background. Again, now we have the light blue in there, but it's going to blend well to the dark blue. So squeeze in a little more than a tablespoon. The tree does have a little bit more surface to it. And I used up most of that light blue underneath, so I'm going to just add a drop. Okay, two drops of water. I'm going to mix that up. And I need a little bit more. 
Again, you're going to have to squeeze the bag fairly consistently or fairly firmly to get the, the blue, enough blue out because we have a nice thin line cut on that for the piping. But try not to squeeze your bag too hard. find this a very relaxing thing to do to paint on the cookies I'm going to apologize right now it is a snow day here in my town and I live right well school's right behind me and the kids just let out for lunch break I was trying to get this done before they let out but if you hear screaming and playing, that's what it is. Okay. And we're going to let that crust over. And again, don't worry about any rustic spots. We are going to sort of the bare spots. We're going to be covering it with details. So we're going to be coming back to our latte cup now. And we should have had enough time to let this just crust over a bit. And what that means is it just kind of crusts on the top. It's still very soft, but it's gonna let us do the details around it so that it doesn't all muck up and bleed together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our darker blue and I'm gonna actually start on the bottom just to give this a little more time up here. And I'm gonna go right across that white. And then I'm going to outline my whole thing. Just do the best you can. Don't worry about getting outlining right to the edge because sometimes you'll go over the edge. Sometimes if you do that and you fill it, it's going to flood over the edge. So we don't want that. If you have any little bare spots, fill them in. And you can see I didn't do this exactly perfectly. So you can go back and fix your mistakes because of the icing consistency we're working with. Because when we go to fill it, it's all going to bleed together. If you're using a stiffer icing to do your outlines and then a thinner icing to flood in, you'll find you'll have more definition and actually still see those outlines instead of it kind of connecting together like it is right now. I have icing all over my arm. And we're just going to go through. You don't want to work with it too much because you can actually ruin your outline that you did and if you are going to hold the cookie hold it somewhere where there is no icing and do it very carefully and to smooth that out I'm just not going to actually use my scribe tool to do a little shimmy shimmy shake I'm actually pressing down into the cookie in the icing but I'm not pressing into the cookie itself I'm just grabbing it. That keeps my hands from grabbing it and possibly mucking up. I'm just going to fix any little areas I don't like. And now we're going to do the top section. So I'm going to come right across that white. And then I'm going to go up and connect to the top of my lid there, or the bottom of my lid. You can see my there. And use your needle tool to fix anything you don't like. Now you can just flood this in like this, or if you're feeling particularly confident, you can pipe right across the bottom of your lid there. If there's a little tiny gap, it won't matter too much because when you go in and fill it, it'll push that line right up to the, to the lid. And just fill the section. Any of those bare spots like this will eventually meld together, but you can help it along. And it'll only melt together if you have enough icing in there. 
So you can see I'm just pulling the icing and I'm doing that little, I'm grabbing the icing and I'm almost whipping it back and I'm moving it to where I want it to go. I'm really having trouble seeing over there. If you are gonna be turning your cookie, you wanna make sure that you are not grabbing or ruining any of the icing that you have had already laid down. You can get little cookie turntables, just little single cookie ones, and you can use that. I've just never really felt a need for it. Okay, so we're going to let him rest because when we come back in to do this knit technique and any additional little sort of accents, we want this to be crusted over so that we don't blend it all together. So we're gonna sit him aside And we're gonna come back to our mitt. And you can see your glaze should still be shiny unless you've given it a, a, some extra time. Um, but it'll be crusted over enough for us to work on. And this is where that knit technique that we we're doing comes into play. So we're gonna be doing our mitt. Now you can go through and outline your whole thing, which I will show you how to do. Um, but before we do that, I want to just use my needle tool down sort of the, the, the middle of the knit, and I'm actually just creating myself a couple of guidelines in, your, in the glaze. If your glaze is crusted over more, it's not gonna show the lines as much. But these are just going to be a couple areas that I want to place down that knit pattern. So we're looking at this double knit. I'll show you how to do this sort of single chain in a moment. I might be able to sneak one more right there. I'm not going to come right down to the bottom because I'm actually going to be creating a cuff on the bottom. So what we're going to want to do, probably easiest to start right here and outline your mitt. This is just gonna give a little visual barrier. Hopefully I am doing that close enough to the edge. I cannot see, the camera's in the way. And I'm gonna come around, and that's okay. If you have a little mistake like that, just go in and pick it up with your needle tool. Try not to muck up any icing underneath, but we're gonna be covering that anyways. And then I'm just going to come across where I piped that. And if you see a little bit of that glaze that you scratched out, don't worry, we're going to be filling it in. Before we fill in the bottom cuff, though, we want to do our, our knit pattern. So you, you saw I actually started in the center with my scratch mark, and I'm going to do the same for any piping. This makes sure that everything I do on my cookies is balanced. So I generally always start with the center line. And we're going to be coming in and squeezing that double knit pattern. Take your time on this. So every time I come down, I'm actually dropping just a little bit lower. And I'm trying not to do too tight of a knit. I find some people try to do like really tight. Loosen it up. Make them a little bit bigger. And drop further than you think. And this is going to give you um, the best use of your time, the best use of your icing, and still give you the look. So I'm actually going lower. Some people want to do it like they want to start next here, really close. And what you find is that your icing can blend together too much, but it's also going to take you so long and it's going to take more icing. Now, if for some reason you don't like how it looks or your icing is a little too thin, so you're losing definition, you can use your scribe tool to pull straight down through the center. Clean off the tip in between. You can also come in between each arm and just give it a little definition. So we're gonna come in here on our next one. You can start on the left or the right from here, wherever is easiest for you. And I'm going to do my other knit pattern. 
I'm cleaning off the tip in between every couple. And this is why we're focusing on the double knit first before we do any details in between, because if you're doing this any bigger, there might not be room in between to do certain patterns. And that's why I didn't discuss those patterns yet, because we want to see where we're at. Every cookie is going to be a bit different. If you're running into, say, oh, you're a little closer over here to the line, just skip. See, I don't quite have enough room there, so I'm going to skip it. I'm going to just come below. It won't matter. The eye won't see that later. You'll know as you're doing it, but you won't see it once it's done. And I don't really have enough room to do this one here, so I'm just going to pretend like I'm only doing half the side. I'm going to use my needle and fluid to fill that in just a little bit and pull back my icing. And I definitely don't have enough to do on this side. Remember I mentioned earlier that I think my icing is too loose. This is, yours is going to come out with more definition. This is because I accidentally mixed up my icings earlier. So I have just enough room in between and I think what I'm going to do it's just a single line. You could do a double line. And actually, I can show you an example. Hopefully the light won't reflect off the packaging too much. But you can see I've done a double line in between the knit on this stocking. Um, you could also do what I did here, which is a chain effect. And let's just see. I'm just going to scrape off a piece of parchment here. Actually, do I have a clean piece of parchment? I do. So if you have enough room to do this sort of chain effect, all I've done was piped a line. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that in this light. All I've done is piped a line and I've created little drops and pull, drop and pull like I was doing earlier, those little teardrops, and at the sort of tail end, I'm not doing this very very cleanly because I can't get close enough to the, to the So I've piped a line and I'm doing drop, squeeze, drop, pull down, squeeze, drop, pull down. So you could do a chain like that if you wanted to. And before you add any more details, feel free to just let your cookie rest and crust and then you could see. I actually think I am going to go in and do, now that it's starting to crust over, I think I am going to do that detail of that chain. And don't worry too much about the, ex the existing details because a cable knit is all knit together. So if it touches, it's fine. You just want to give a little time in between it touching so that it can um, not melt into one visual icing blob. And if you have any areas that felt like it was a little too, you lost detail, you can go in and fix the detail. Just try and do it before it actually starts drawing too much, otherwise it's going to crack and do all sorts of funny things. All right, now for the bottom, all we're going to do is like a zigzag back and forth, very loosey-goosey. Don't even worry about filling the space perfectly because you sort of want little definition in there. But you can use your scrub tool to kind of pull the icing up. And 
your mitt is done. Now one thing I always say is, if you don't like how your cookie looks, let it rest, let it dry, and then come back to it because you might be surprised how it works in the whole collection. So the next cookie we're gonna be working on is our snowflake. Our mitt is done. So our snowflake, what we want to do is you want to find wherever you want your arms and again, create yourself a little guide mark if you need to. I would only do a couple. I wouldn't go around and do the whole thing. It won't be needed once you get going. And I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna do that knit pattern, but I'm gonna do a teardrop first on the top. Just to get that little top line. And I'm trying to make these just a little smaller for the sake of being dainty. And I'm gonna come down to the center and I'm gonna stop before I get to the center. So you should be able to get three or four, I think I got four on this one, arms. And you're just gonna turn it and you're gonna do repeat the same thing. And I noticed my icing. So see, I touched the glaze there. I got a little crust of an icing. Um, just be really careful that if you're fixing anything, you're not affecting your sort of underneath layers. Hands are covered in icing. And if you've accidentally dra dragged a line of your icing as you go, don't worry, just finish what you're doing and go back and see if you need to fix anything. See, that's bleeding together a little bit more than I want. And that's where I dragged my line. Off my hands a bit here. Okay. Take breaks as you need to. But also take your time with this. So feel free to pause the video. You can see what I did there. I don't like that, but I'm going to leave it. Because quite often when I come back in with the other details it might fix itself but you can always come back in with that handy dandy needle tool and when I'm fixing icing I'm actually trying to drag through where I have existing icing to move it around don't mess with it too much because as it sits and rests you'll find and as you do the rest of the designs it will start to come together we're not looking for perfection we're looking for just the general idea for your eye to visually see a snowflake. And you can see this center section is all bare. Don't worry about that because we're gonna be filling that in with a dot later. So if you can let that set for a minute, I would. Um, we don't have to do details like this one. This one I have just a teardrop on a line and then dots. You can do whatever detail you want. You could do a series of dots. You could add extra dots if you want to. I'm just doing slightly smaller ones below it. I'm working with the space I have. And I actually think I'm gonna just leave it like that. So I'm gonna do just a nice little round dot in the center and I'm actually using the tip of my icing to move the icing around but you can also just come in and use your needle tool 
And I can see some of these I didn't, you know, I did th these arms a little too lower down compared to over here. You can go in and fix it if you want to. But the more you add, the more you're likely to muck it up. And that is your snowflake. You guessed it, the next one we're working on in the rotation is the tree. And our glaze should be done just enough. If it's too shiny, maybe give it another minute. And this is where we're gonna need our paintbrush. So if you can rinse off your paintbrush, that's great. That's why I suggested another little um, cup or dish, aside from the one that we had for the glaze. I'm just gonna rinse off my brush with some water. I'm gonna wipe it off with my clean cloth. Now, we can do this a couple of ways, but I would suggest having a little tray or dish. I'm actually just gonna use the lid of my little cup. I just need a little bit of water. I need to be able to tap the brush and then dry it off, so have a cloth handy, a clean cloth or a paper towel. And that'll make sense in a moment. So for this one, you can see I turned it upside down. This is gonna make it easier, but all I'm doing is gonna squeeze a dot. Now you can see I started in the middle again. Anytime I'm doing a pattern that goes to both sides, I start in the middle. That way I know exactly how my pattern is going to be on both sides. If your line is a little wonky and it's not a perfect line, don't worry. If you have some dots that are bigger than others, again, don't worry. And we're going to be working on one layer at a time. So what we're doing is we're going to be doing this one layer and then we're going to be doing that one and so forth. So we're gonna dip our brush in a little tiny drop of water, but we don't want all that water on our brush. We just want it down. And if you have a squared off brush like I'm providing in the kits, I have icing on this one, um, we're gonna be working on the side. And I'm gonna press down into that icing and pull it towards the next layer. And it, you don't want it to look perfect. kind of meant to just be like a little hint of a snow on branches. Always pulling up to that next tier on the tree. And if for some reason you don't like it, just go in and add a little bit more. Damp down your brush, tap it off. And you can also always use your needle tool to just draw through the icing just a tiny little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go through with our white. I didn't start in the middle here, just to show that once you get going, you can just kind of do whatever you want. They can actually also be slightly different angles and levels, but you can see I've gone down almost, like I've gone down to here, so I'm creating like a nice curve. We want, we want our branches to curve down. We don't want them straight across. The higher we get and the closer they are, you, we're gonna end up almost like with a V shape with our dots. So when your, your paintbrush is not damp enough, you, you're gonna find it's gonna do that. And I am kind of working on an angle. I'm not working right on the side. You can if you want to. I'm just a little more comfortable with it so I can and we're gonna do the next one. So every time I'm doing a new layer, I'm actually doing less dots, obviously because we're tapering and getting smaller. But I started with seven on the bottom one, five on this one, now I'm to four, and then the top one will probably likely be a three. 
You can do smaller dots for more branches. You could do larger dots if you want to, but I find it just starts bleeding together then. So I drop down, I'm almost doing a V. And clean off your brush regularly in between, get that excess icing off. And look and assess. You can see I did these top ones a little bit differently. So I'm actually just going to go in, just add a little bit more. And I'm just going to loosen up my stroke on that, like I'm not pressing down into it as much. But you don't want to play with it too much because as it dries, it's going to do some other things too. So. And it's probably already starting to crust over. I just don't like how thick those are. So I'm just picking up some of the icing. But the more you play with it, the more likely you are to ruin ones above it. And we're just going to let it be. If you have some edible spray glitter, this would be a good time. And I want to show you, like, if you really mucked one up, just use your cloth. Don't press down into your glaze because the glaze is soft. Just pick it up, pull it off, and redo one. There you go. Better. So that is our brush embroidery tree. The very last cookie that we are going to finish up today is our latte cup. So this one we've had to come back to several times because we have so many layers. So this is where we clean it up. Any edges that you don't like will be outlining, um, which we can do now. So I'm just going to go through across my lid and creating a bit of an outline. You can go around the whole thing if you want to. And I'm just going to do a little detail in the middle down here, just to give a little definition and something for the eye. Ooh, there goes the snow plow. Hopefully that wasn't too loud for the camera. And I'm going to do my bottom of my cup as well. Just give it a bit of an outline. And I'm going to do just a little detail on the bottom. Sometimes those added 3D details just help really clean it up. You can go in and do the sides here if you want to too, like I did little side edges there. You can actually see in my dry cookie little cookie crumbs from stacking them. So what we want to work on now is our knit. And the reason why I didn't do any outlining here is because I'm actually going to be using my white to outline. So I'm going to work around the whole thing. And if you don't want to do the knit pattern on this, you don't have to. You could just let this dry. You could write, you know, you could take one of your colors and try and do some script. But I'm going to be doing just a little mark down the middle. And then in the middle, from there to the edge, I'm going to do another mark. And then same on the other side. You can see my cookie is sliding because it's a very thin surface. So grab your cookie very carefully. I'm barely using my nail on the edge down here. Or grab a toothpick or another thing and hold it in a stable place and um, use that. Okay. So again, I'm only gonna be worrying about the double knit because I don't know how much room in between each I'm gonna have. Like the snowflake, this is a bit of a narrower surface, so you'll want to work on smaller drops. When you get to the bottom, just pull as close as you can to your line 
and use the needle tool. If you have a little bit of a bare spot there that feels like it should have one, go ahead, but you'll want to do just a tiny, you actually just want a little less. You just want the visual there. You don't want to fill the space because you don't want it to bleed together. And then go ahead and do your other knit lines. I'm trying so hard not to rush through this, but I want this video to be a certain time frame. Alright, and if they're not perfectly evenly spaced, do not worry about it. I'm just going to use my needle tool to draw down some definition. Again, your icing probably won't be as loose as this white one. It'll be thicker. You want a stiffer icing for this. And I think here, I was talking about those double lines earlier, that's what I want. Double lines are not the easiest to do um, because it's easy to, to bleed your icing together. I'm actually going to use the outline as part of my double line. So you can always change cookies as you go. You don't have to do the exact designs and patterns that are shown to you. Um, you can make them your own. And voila, we have a latte cup. So guys, I'm gonna move my sample ones away. Clean up my surface a bit. We have our mint, our cup, our snowflake, and a brushed embroidered tree. You'll want to give these two or three hours to crust over before you actually stack them. They actually may need even four hours. But fantastic job. Way to go. If you guys um, do these, at, feel free to post a photo and tag Sugar Bee Cookies on social media, Instagram, Facebook. I would love to see your work. All the details are in the description below for the video and the supplies, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday.